This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Point of care lung ultrasonography performed at the bedside can be used to rapidly evaluate patients with dyspnea and respiratory failure. Its benefits as a diagnostic tool in emergency conditions have led to its increasing use. This video reviews the basics of point-of-care lung ultrasonography for the most common causes of dyspnea. The thoracic cavity consists of skin and subcutaneous tissue, the chest wall muscles, the ribs, the intercostal muscles, two pleural laminae, the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura with the pleural cavity between them, and the lungs. During respiration, the two pleural laminae slide against each other, allowing the lungs to expand freely. Interlobular connective tissue septa extend from the visceral pleura deep into the lung to form a delicate support for the alveoli. The view acquired during lung ultrasonography is contained between two adjacent ribs, beneath which the pleural line can be visualized. The acoustic shadowing caused by the two adjacent ribs is called the BAT sign. Healthy lungs contain a substantial amount of air that transmits ultrasound waves very poorly, with most of the air reflected at the air tissue boundary. The horizontal reverberations caused by fully aerated lungs are called A lines. The distance between the pleural line and an underlying A line is equal to the distance between the pleura and the ultrasound transducer. Several A lines may be visible and are always equidistant from one another. Fully aerated lungs have the following features. Visible lung sliding in which the pleural line moves with respiration, a visible smooth and echoic pleural line, and visible A lines. Point of care ultrasonography of the lung is helpful in assessing patients who have dyspnea associated with pneumonia, pulmonary edema, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD and asthma, and pulmonary embolism. There are no absolute contraindications for lung ultrasonography. To perform point-of-care lung ultrasonography, gather the necessary equipment, an ultrasound device, a low-frequency convex transducer, ultrasound gel, and cleaning wipes to decontaminate the equipment after the examination. Although the examination can be done with various types of probes, convex and microconvex are the ones most widely available and suitable to perform the study. Different ultrasound devices may have unique functions and buttons. If the ultrasound system has adjustable settings, achieve gain, depth, focus, and mode according to the instructions of the specific device in order to ensure a good quality image. Gain controls the brightness of the image, depth controls the field of view, and focus determines the sharpest point of the image. The B mode is selected to render a two-dimensional image and the M mode to render a time motion image. In the evaluation of patients with confirmed or suspected highly infectious diseases, personal protective equipment and a probe cover should be used in accordance with your specific institutional procedures. Before you perform the examination, introduce yourself to the patient and verify the patient's identity. Maintain comfortable thermal conditions during the examination by covering the patient or providing a comfortable room temperature. Place the patient in a semi-recumbent, supine, or prone position. If the patient is able to follow instructions, the examination may be performed with the patient seated upright. Select the lung preset setting on the ultrasound device, which will adjust the gain, depth, and focus to the levels used most commonly in lung ultrasonography. If this setting is not available, disable the image enhancement filters, such as cross-field imaging, noise reduction, and harmonic imaging. These filters can reduce or modify artifacts and thus make image interpretation more difficult. Apply a small amount of ultrasound gel to the low-frequency convex transducer scanning surface. Visualize the lungs on the screen of the ultrasound device. Position the probe vertically along the longitudinal axis with the probe orientation marker pointing towards the patient's head. Hold the transducer perpendicular to the chest wall. Without doing this, you may obtain indistinct patterns, making it difficult to identify artifacts correctly. 
Minimize your hand movements so that the findings are generated by the patient and not by your hand. Avoid applying too much pressure, which can cause the patient pain. Identify the anatomical structures in your field of view. Set the gain of the ultrasound machine to zero and adjust so that the rib shadows are black, the parietal tissue is gray, and the pleural line is white. Set the depth to 10 centimeters. Depending on the patient's body habitus, the depth may need to be modified. It may be necessary to increase the depth to as much as 16 centimeters. If available, set the focal length at the level of the pleural line, which will allow you to precisely assess lesions and artifacts at that location. Several different examination techniques and approaches to finding the zones of the chest have been proposed to facilitate archiving of the examination, communication of the results, and monitoring of the disease course. The most common approach to zoning is the division of each hemithorax into six segments limited on the front by the parasternal line and fifth intercostal space, on the lateral side by the anterior axillary line, posterior axillary line, and the fifth intercostal space, and on the back by the pair of vertebral lines and subscapular line. To cover the largest possible area of the chest wall, examine each intercostal space. Perform this step as you perform the ultrasonographic examination of each segment. Store the obtained images and the report for future reference. For patients who are placed in a semi-recumbent or sitting position, including patients imaged while they are in the intensive care unit, you can perform the study without assessment of the paravertebral areas. For patients placed in the prone position, you may perform the exam without assessment of the anterior lung fields. At the initial stages of many lung diseases, an ultrasound image may be normal, similar to lung ultrasound seen in fully aerated lungs, including visible lung sliding, a smooth and echoic pleural line, and visible A lines. When lung aeration is reduced, the subpleural structures along the course of the ultrasound wave become more accessible and produce a variety of abnormal findings. Various pathologic conditions can cause thickening of the interlobular septa, which are surrounded by alveolar gas. The vertical artifacts that result from the entrance of the ultrasound beam into these structures are called B lines. A B line is a hyperechoic artifact resembling a laser beam that arises from the pleural line. It moves in unison with lung sliding, reaches the bottom of the screen, and erases the A lines. The presence of one or two B lines per field can be normal, but the number of B lines will increase as interstitial disease progresses. Short, ill-defined artifacts that fade rapidly and do not move with respiration may not be of clinical relevance, and artifacts that do not extend from the pleural line may indicate the presence of subpleural consolidations rather than interlobular septal thickening. The complete loss of alveolar aeration leads to the formation of tissue-like patterns called consolidations. Subpleural consolidations are hypoechoic structures that move together with the lung sliding. We will now discuss lung ultrasound in several abnormal conditions. Community-acquired pneumonia is an inflammatory process that initially involves only certain areas of the lung and occurs asymmetrically. As the inflammation advances, the following features may be observed at varying degrees of intensity. Focal pleural line abnormalities, which make the line irregular and hypoechoic. Multiple B lines. Multifocal confluent B lines, known as white lung. Subpleural consolidations. Lobular or segmental consolidations. And an air or fluid bronchogram. Air bronchograms are air-filled hyperechoic bronchi surrounded by consolidations. Fluid bronchograms are images of fluid-filled bronchi visible as hypoechoic bronchial lumens surrounded by consolidations. Various factors lead to interstitial pneumonia, including viruses, toxic exposures, and autoimmune conditions. The most typical presentation involves multifocal lesions. Even in an advanced inflammatory process, the involved lung regions may be separated by fully aerated areas known as spared areas. In patients with viral interstitial pneumonia, the following features can be observed. Focal pleural line abnormalities, multifocal B lines, white lung which connotes severely injured lungs with poor aeration, and multifocal subpleural consolidations. Pulmonary edema is caused by an increase in pulmonary vascular permeability, which can occur in several conditions, including heart failure. 
Unlike pneumonia, edema typically is found symmetrically at the lung bases owing to gravity. Lung ultrasonography typically shows B lines as well as a smooth and echoic pleural line. The ultrasound image of the lung results from a partial reduction in the ratio of air to fluid, which results in the appearance of B lines. Symmetric involvement of four lower chest quadrants indicates an increased amount of extravascular lung water. Echocardiography is indicated to establish a definitive diagnosis. Pleural effusion describes the presence of fluid in the pleural cavity. On ultrasonography, pleural fluid usually appears as an anechoic area, that is, dark space around the lung. In the thoracic cavity, fluid is typically found at the lowest point owing to gravity. Thus, place the patient in a semi-recumbent position and apply the probe at the base of the chest. You should visualize three elements, the pleural cavity, the diaphragm, and an abdominal organ, either the liver or the spleen. Together, looking at these regions will make it possible to pinpoint the exact location of the fluid. In some cases, you may see the thoracic spine during ultrasound examination. This constitutes a nonspecific finding known as the spine sign, which indirectly indicates the presence of fluid in the pleural cavity. Various techniques can be used to estimate the volume of a pleural effusion. The most common technique is to measure the distance from the diaphragm to the base of the lung and the lateral surface of the chest wall to the lung. These measurements, obtained in centimeters, should then be added together and multiplied by 70. The resulting volume is expressed in milliliters. Pneumothorax can be life-threatening. The following findings on ultrasonography can be visualized when a pneumothorax is present. The absence of lung sliding, the absence of bee lines and subpleural lesions, the absence of the lung pulse, and the presence of the lung point, which occurs when the lung appears suddenly and transiently on the ultrasound image. We will discuss each of these in some detail now. Presence of lung sliding rules out the presence of pneumothorax on the area that is scanned. Absence of bee lines or subpleural lesions can be found in a healthy lung, while the absence of a lung sliding is not specific to pneumothorax and may result from other conditions, including bronchial obstruction. When lung sliding is difficult to detect, it can be helpful to decrease the image depth or use a high-frequency linear transducer to better visualize the pleura. Alternatively, you can perform ultrasonography in M mode, which shows movement captured on consecutive one-dimensional images. In M mode, lung motion is thought to resemble the sea in sand, sometimes called the seashore sign. When the lung is collapsed as a result of air in the pleural cavity, ultrasound waves are reflected and no movement of the chest structures is visualized. These effects result in a static image known as the barcode or stratosphere sign. In cases of diminished lung sliding with an inconclusive M-mode pattern, it may be useful to investigate the presence of the so-called lung pulse. Lung pulse is a vertical artifact that results from the transmission of heartbeats to the lung. The artifacts reach the pleural line but never cross it. Of the ultrasonographic signs of pneumothorax, the only pathognomonic sign is lung point, while the others represent additional features with low specificity. Lung point is defined as the point at which lung starts and the pneumothorax ends. This occurs when the lung appears suddenly and transiently on the ultrasound image. Thus, pleura with pleural sliding can be seen on one side of the lung point, and on the other, the sliding is not visible. An exacerbation of COPD or asthma can be triggered by a number of factors. In a patient with dyspnea who has a normal lung image, the exclusion of other pathologic conditions may point the final diagnosis toward exacerbation of COPD or asthma. Obstruction can be diagnosed on ultrasonography by assessing the respiratory movements of the diaphragm. Place the patient in the semi-recumbent position. Place the probe in the right mid-clavicular line and project the beam cephalad so that you can visualize the liver and the diaphragm behind it. During inspiration, the diaphragm approaches the probe and during expiration, it moves away. Turn on the M mode on the ultrasound machine. The diaphragm is now shown as a hyperechoic line rising during inspiration and falling during expiration. The patient should be asked to take a deep breath and then to force expiration through an open mouth. Measure the distance of diaphragm excursion during the first second of expiration. The dimension has been marked with a letter A. Next, measure the diaphragm excursion during the entire expiration. 
This dimension is marked with a letter B. The ratio of A to B, known as the M mode index of obstruction, can serve as a good indicator of obstruction with a cutoff value below 0.77. Pulmonary embolism, or PE, is a life-threatening condition that can be difficult to diagnose at the bedside. Ultrasound of the lung is of limited diagnostic value in patients with PE. As is the case for COPD and asthma, pulmonary embolism is most often a diagnosis of exclusion. If the result of the ultrasound is normal and the patient has dyspnea, assessment for a deep vein thrombosis is indicated. Diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis in a patient with dyspnea and normal results on lung ultrasonography is strongly suggestive of PE. In such cases, computed tomographic pulmonary angiography, echocardiography, or scintigraphy of the lung is indicated. Doppler lung ultrasound is a new method that is still being developed for imaging subpleural lesions. It is especially useful during examination of large consolidations where blood flow in the lesion can be assessed. In consolidations caused by inflammation, flow should be seen in the whole lesion, whereas in consolidations resulting from lung infarction, blood flow ends proximally. Although lung ultrasonography can be used to establish the cause of dyspnea, it has several limitations. Lung ultrasound has limited capability to detect pathologic conditions not extending to the pleural. Further, different medical conditions may show overlapping or identical findings. B lines are not specific and may occur in patients with other diseases such as cardiac and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and fibrosis. Consolidations are also nonspecific findings that can suggest infection but can also be seen in pulmonary embolism. In pneumothorax, pleural sliding may be absent owing to other clinical conditions such as bronchial tree obstruction or subpleural emphysematous bullae, which may require additional diagnostics depending on the clinical condition. In the diagnosis of pneumothorax, the lung point is the only pathognomonic sign, but sometimes it can be time-consuming or impossible to locate. Therefore, it may not be possible to estimate the dimensions of a pneumothorax. Lung ultrasonography cannot be used to differentiate the causes of interstitial pneumonia. In patients with viral pneumonia, lung ultrasonography has limited ability to diagnose bacterial superinfection. The value of ultrasonography of the lung may also be limited by the presence of subcutaneous emphysema, which can hinder a proper assessment of the lungs, making it difficult to correctly identify the pleural line and mimicking different types of artifacts, including A and B lines, the presence of morbid obesity, which may hinder access to some areas of the chest wall, operator inexperience, and the possibility of transmission of bacterial, viral, and fungal infections. It is important to disinfect the equipment after performing ultrasonography. Cleaning should be carried out in accordance with the standards at your institution. Lung ultrasonography is an easily used, well-established, broadly accessible, and cost-effective diagnostic tool. Its major benefits include bedside availability, as well as outpatient availability, the capacity to assess for a wide range of causes underlying respiratory failure, usefulness for monitoring treatment course, for example, the change in observed findings, the areas in which they occur, and volume of pleural effusion, and its rapid detection of life-threatening conditions such as pneumothorax. Lung ultrasonography also has the advantage of being a safe means of examination for both the patient and physician.